Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Saturday, September 28th, 2024. And if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comment section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my daily rundown best bet in the MLB, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. There's also a link in the description. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Saturday in Major League Baseball. First up, the Pittsburgh Pirates taking on the New York Yankees. We had a great pitching matchup in this one. Paul Skeens and Luis Heal. And this one's a 105 Eastern start time. I think we see a low-scoring game here. I mean, when you look at both of these offenses in the month of September against right-handed pitching, Pittsburgh's dead last in baseball in Team OPS with a 604 Team OPS, 25% strikeout rate, a low walk rate to go with it, very low isolated power as well. And the Yankees, while they're you know the AL East champs, they're still right around league average in OPS and ISO against righties in September. So not their best numbers, not their best month offensively this season. And you're facing Paul Skeens, who we know has been excellent this year, but even better on the road with a 1.37 road ERA in 59 and the third innings, 84 strikeouts to go with it. Heal, while you know his last game wasn't his best and his control's been off a little bit, not pitching the deepest in the ball games. He has a great matchup here against Pittsburgh, and the Yankees have still won his last four starts. So it's tough to go against either of these starters. I'm just going to go with the under in this one. Next up, we see the Detroit Tigers hosting the Chicago White Sox. I like another under in this game. We got Sean Burke for Chicago. No official starter for Detroit, but you know Burke's pitched well so far in his first three games. 14 innings, 16 strikeouts, a 1.93 ERA. And on the other side, we know the Tigers, you know, first of all, Comerica Park, very pitcher friendly, but also, you know, Tigers pitching staff has been a big reason why this team made this run here in September. I mean, the bullpen has been excellent in this month. We know the White Sox have been one of the weakest offenses in baseball all season. So give me the under in this game as well. Next up, we see the Cincinnati Reds taking on the Chicago Cubs. We got Red Louder and Kyle Hendricks on the mound. Now, you know, I do think Louder is the better option to start this game, and Hendricks does have a better ERA at Wrigley Field than on the road, but it's not by much. I mean, it's still an ERA above five at Wrigley with that 1-7 and seven record, and, you know, Hendricks' last game was against the Nationals. Not a great lineup. They've been struggling against righties. He still gave up nine base hits and four earned runs in a 5-1 to one Nationals win, so I think Cincinnati can get to him. I like the way that Louder's pitched so far. Good, good numbers on the road, and in 25 and two-thirds innings, he's still got a sub-2 ERA at 1.4. Give me the Reds in this one on the money line. Next up, we'll go to Toronto as the Blue Jays host the Marlins. We got Yariel Rodriguez for Toronto, but no official starter for the Marlins. Unfortunately, these last couple of days of the MLB season, these teams kind of just throwing something out there in a lot of these situations like the Marlins, who, you know, not really playing for anything. So it, it, these honestly are not the best games in terms of value oftentimes. You know, you find a few spots here and there, but for the for the most part, I'll be treading lightly, not just today, but also Sunday. But in this game, you know, Ariel Rodriguez has pitched well at Rogers Center this season, a 3.44 ERA there. I think he's going to be the better option in this game. I think the Blue Jays have the better lineup in this matchup. So while I do think the Marlins bullpen had actually a surprisingly solid season and a solid month of September, I still got to go with the Blue Jays in this one on the run line. Next up, we see the Philadelphia Phillies taking on the Washington Nationals. Zach Wheeler and Mackenzie Gore are your starters. And Mackenzie Gore's had a decent season this year with an ERA just right around 4 at 4.04. Uh, you know, 10 and 12 win loss record, not too shabby for a team like the Nationals, who are, you know, 20 games below 500 or so. Gore's pitched well at home this season, and he's got a winning record there, a sub 4 ERA. The problem for me is sometimes teams just own you, and the Philadelphia Phillies. They know how to get to Mackenzie Gore. When you look at the numbers in 143 career plate appearances against the current Phillies hitters, the Phillies on a 512 expected slugging percentage, just under a 300 expected batting average, pretty low strikeout rate, not the best walk rate, but they have definitely gotten to Gore quite a few times, and that includes the last game that Gore faced them, which wasn't that long ago. It was back on August 17th. Five earned runs, nine base hits for the Phillies in that game against Gore, and a 5-1 to one Phillies win in that one. We saw a couple of lopsided games the previous season as well for Philadelphia against Mackenzie Gore as a starter. So with Zach Wheeler on the side for the Phillies, I got to roll with Philadelphia and lay the one and a half runs. Next up, we see the San Francisco Giants taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. Andre Pallante and Blake Snell are your starters. And we've mentioned it now. This is the third year of Ron's rundown. 
and the third year of Blake Snell being a part of Ron's rundown. And we've said the same thing each time with his season. You fade him early on because it does take him quite a while to get going. And whether it's you know coming off an injury or this situation where he signed late into the offseason and didn't have a spring training, we figured he was going to struggle early. And what did he do the first three games, his first you know three starts in April? He had an 11.57 ERA, and the Giants went 0-3. But since those three losses... There's not been many starters more profitable than, than Blake Snell in the league. He's won all four of his games, or the, the Giants have won all four of his games in September. They only lost one of his starts in August. They went 5-1 and one in August, 3-1 and one in the month of July. He didn't pitch much in June. He lost his only start, but won his only two games in May. So he has been one of the more profitable pitchers in baseball. He's in great form right now. I mean, you look at his last two starts on the road against the Orioles and the Royals, two teams that at the time were still playing to try to clinch their playoff spots. And he still went uh, six, uh, 12 innings of combined shutout ball, 21 strikeouts, only three base hits in, you know, back to in, in both shutout wins. I mean, the day of the Snell has faced some tough lineups recently, the Royals, Orioles, Brewers, Diamondbacks, and all of them have been victories against St. Louis. I think Snell pitches well. I think the Giants back him up against Palante. I like San Francisco on the run line in this one. Next up, we see the Tampa Bay Rays taking on the Boston Red Sox. We're going to see Shane Boz and Cutter Crawford on the mound. Now, this is the first career start for Boz at Fenway Park. And for starting pitchers like him that can give up some sharp contact and you know don't have the experience at Fenway, this is not always the best place to pitch. And I wouldn't be surprised to see this not be his best start, but I think he's still the better option in this game right now. I mean, you look at his you know September so far, 24 and a third innings giving up just six runs, six earned runs, so a 2.22 ERA. Strikeout numbers have been there, but the control's been also a lot better. That's the key for me. I think he pitches well. I mean, he just faced the Red Sox and had a great outing, seven innings, two runs back on September 17th, and an 8-3 Rays win. And believe it or not, the Rays actually have the superior numbers, just slightly, but still better numbers against right-handed pitching than the Red Sox do in the month of September. It's been a really tough month for Boston, and Cutter Crawford's been a part of that. I mean, the Red Sox are just 1-4 and four in his last five games. He's given up a lot of sharp contact and home runs recently. Give me the Rays in this one on the money line. Next up, the Astros and the Guardians. Justin Verlander and Ben Lively are your starters. Now, this is a tough one because I do think the Guardians win, and I like them on the money line because Verlander, he's given up five-plus runs in three of his last four starts. And while one of those games was against the Diamondbacks, two of those were against the Angels and the Reds. So, He's just struggling in general general right now. I think the Guardians get to him. They still are playing for something, playing for that first place in the AL playoffs, so, you know, clinching that. So I think the Guardians win this game. But Ben Lively, we've talked about how he's given up a lot of sharp contact. The expected numbers aren't the best. He's put together a fine season, that's for sure, sub-4 ERA. But I do think that some of the more powerful hitters in this Astros lineup could find a home run against him. So I'm looking at a few home run props for the Astros in this game. And in fact, you know, while Lively's only had six career uh, plate appearances against current Astros hitters, one of those is Victor Caratini, who's kind of taken over the catching job for Houston recently, and he has a career home run against Lively. So that's a super long shot for Houston if you're looking at some, you know, long shot home runs. But I think, you know, guys like Bregman, Altuve, very live, you know, Kyle Tucker, very live to hit a home run in this game. So maybe mix and match a little bit, but give me the Guardians on the money line. Just keep an eye on those home runs. I think Lively gives up one or two. Next up, the Orioles and the Twins. We got Zebby Matthews for Minnesota, but no official starter for Baltimore. You know, this was a disaster month for the Twins, and, you know, Zebby Matthews has struggled at target field. I just can't I can't back Minnesota in this game. I'm going to roll the Orioles on the money line on the road. Minnesota's offense really struggled this month. Their starting rotation wasn't as sharp. The bullpen as well, and we see them now on the outside looking in, and I think it's the Orioles win this game uh, you know, on the money line on the road. Not my favorite game on the board, but I'll lean towards Baltimore. Next up, we see the Kansas City Royals taking on the Atlanta Braves. we got Seth Lugo for Kansas City, but no official starter for Atlanta. I'm going to go with the Royals in the first five innings. I do think Atlanta has the bullpen advantage, but Seth Lugo has pitched really well on the road this season, a 9-3 record, 2.67 ERA. He's in great form right now. Only one of his last five games where he gave up more than three runs, so he's pitching well. The Royals are still playing for, you know, seeding in that wild card race in the American League. Give me the Royals in the first five innings. Next up, we see the Dodgers and the Rockies from Coors Field. We got Antonio Senzatella and Yoshinobu Yamamoto on the mound. 
you know, last week we saw the same pitching matchup, and it was a game where the Rockies jumped out to a 4 nothing lead and 5-1 to lead in the middle innings, and they were able to cover the run line. They still lost the game outright 6-5. to But in this game, I think we see a high-scoring contest. And one of the big reasons why I'm not big on the Dodgers in the postseason this year is their bullpen. And when you look at the bullpen in September, it's got the third-worst XFIP in baseball. The ERA is okay, but when you also look at the projected war for this Dodgers bullpen overall this season, it's near the bottom of the league. So I think the Dodgers have a great lineup, a decent rotation. You know, the injuries have kind of piled up and underperformances from guys like Walker Bueller. But I think the bullpen's going to hold this Dodgers team back in the playoffs this year. And I think in this game, we see a high-scoring affair. I still do not trust Sensatella. Yoshinobu Yamamoto gave up uh, four runs against these Rockies in that game, and now he makes his course field debut, has never pitched there before. I think we see a lot of runs in this one. Give me the over. Next up, we see the San Diego Padres taking on the Arizona Diamondbacks. We're going to see Mr. Eduardo Rodriguez for Arizona, but no official starter for San Diego. This is a tough one because we don't we don't really know what we're going to see from Rodriguez in this game. He's been so inconsistent. The previous two starts before his last game against San Francisco, he pitched really well at combined, I believe, 11 and a third innings of just three-run ball or so, four-run ball with you know 18 strikeouts. He was pitching really well. And then he faces San Francisco at Chase Field, five earned runs, three home runs in a blowout loss. So, you know, the Padres in the month of September have not been great against lefties. They're near the bottom of the league against in OPS and ISO. So I do think it's a better matchup for Erod against San Diego than it was against the Giants. But you never really know what we're going to see. He's given up a lot of sharp contact in his 45 innings this season. I, I just think that the Diamondbacks, because they're playing for that playoff spot while San Diego is pretty much locked in where they are in the standings, I'll give the slight advantage to Arizona in the end. I still like this lineup. I think the bullpen's been improved. And with the Padres' struggles against lefties right now, I think Rodriguez has a decent chance of bouncing back. But this is a tough one. Next up, we see the Texas Rangers taking on the Los Angeles Angels. Andrew Heaney and Griffin Canning are your starters. You know, the Rangers may be at the wrong time, but at least now, that I mean, rather than never, have improved against right-handed pitching where they're top 15 in team OPS against righties. I like their matchup against Griffin Canning. While I don't love backing Andrew Heaney, and he's given up three-plus runs his last three starts, I still think he's a better option, and he just faced this Angels team not too long ago, had a win and a run line cover in the end for the Rangers in that game. When you look at the Halos against left-handed pitching in the month of September, 28th in isolated power, even worse in Team OPS, 27% strikeout rate, a you know decent walk rate, but not enough for me to take the Angels. Give me the Rangers in this one laying the one and a half runs. And the final game for the Saturday card in Major League Baseball, it's the Seattle Mariners and the Oakland Athletics. We're going to see Joey Estes for Oakland, but no official starter for the Mariners. You know, Estes is really struggling right now in his last couple of starts. You think maybe he's running out of gas now at 122 innings on the season. 11 earned runs in his last two games combined, which was only five innings of work against the Cubs and the Yankees. That was 16 base hits to go with it and four home runs. One of those starts was on the road. One of those starts was at home. So, you know, the uh, A's are one and four in his last five games. Estes just faced uh, the Mariners back on September 5th and gave up four earned runs two home runs and a 6-4 to four Mariners win. Just too many things stacked against Estes in this game. So give me the Mariners in this one on the money line and the run line. And that's it. Those are the games for Saturday in baseball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and put those baseball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Manelli. Good luck.